Amen. Most people like to say, I like to grow on top of the mountain, be on the spiritual high, and say, glory to God, hallelujah, and get everybody shouting, hallelujah. But nobody grows on top of the mountain. You only grow when you go to the valleys. Yeah. And in the valley, God makes you strong. And Amen. hallelujah, that's when you gives you hope. And when all hope is gone. And, and, and that's when you start building your strength when you can't go on. Amen. Hallelujah. And then afterwards, as we pursue, he gives us shelter. Amen. And we get a shelter in the storm of life. I mean, you come into a rest to a position that nothing sways you. Yeah. Amen. Because there is no peace on this earth. There's no hope in this world. So why do we look to the world? Because it's the only place that we have real peace is in Christ. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we understand that, then we understand where we're going. Amen. But before we can get to the peace of Christ in our lives, we need to make some adjustment and changes within our hearts by humbling to God and drawing nigh to God with all our hearts. Amen. Just like what we think in our hearts, we say this particular song says it all.
People are trying to fill the void in their lives. People are filled with fear and worry. And, and in the midst of all this crisis, uh, even, even the very little bit of hope in even uh, that people have actually been, uh, how would I say, fallen asleep spiritually. Yeah. To the point that uh, in the midst of their crisis, they're not even making an effort to reach God. No, that's true. And of course, it doesn't help because the circumstance and the crisis are creating a situation where people have been rocked to sleep because they uh, closed the churches, they stopped having services, and they're trying to have services on on YouTube and trying to have on on Zoom and everything else and on um, Facebook. You name it. But there is a missing element because it seems like people are overwhelmed by the circumstances and they're, they're trying to lift people up and trying to lift them up and trying to lift them up and it's like, a, like an old saying, they're, they're pumping up, pump, 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 pump them up, you know, trying to get a go, go, go again, you know, and uh, it seems like uh, things are just getting out of hand. Yeah. Amen. And since we are facing this difficult crisis in possible circumstances, in times when you know it's beyond your ability to overcome, because if you're trying to do it yourself, people, you know, if you want to go out there and try to make it work and try to make it happen, the moment you try to do it, they they throw the book at you. <laughs> if you try to open up your restaurant, you get arrested. Yeah. Amen. If you try to do something else, you get a fine. Yeah. Amen. And for doing nothing wrong. Amen. And and now the people are confused and 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 frustrated and upset and angry. I says. We can't keep going like we are because something worse is going to happen. Amen. We are, people are worried about a virus. They're worried about someone's going to contaminate them. They're walking in fear. And they got to put this mask on to protect themselves. And, and actually, it's not protecting you anyway. <laughs> Glory to God. So why do you think that mask is protecting you? It's like, like a baby, the baby gets a, a, a comfort only when you put a suitor in its mouth. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny, you know, in a sense that we're putting our, we are trying to control something we cannot see and we're panicking over it and we're so panicking over it that we're even closing the jobs, we're closing everything down, we're closing the hospitals and nursing homes down and, and we're, we're all locked up in our little little sheltered homes and thinking, oh boy, I, better, I can't go outside, it's, you know, I can't, I don't know if I should go to the store, maybe my catch it this time. Oh, right. Right? <laughs> And people are overwhelming their minds over what? Yeah. Nothing. Over nothing. But in their mind, it's all there. Yeah. Now, I understand if you're really deadly sick, like you got cancer or something, and you're dying, and you're, you're, you're on, a, on your third leg, and, and, and you're on almost at the bottom of the barrel, you know, you're going to go down, and that's the end. How many people you know that is actually in that condition even with this virus? What? How many people are actually in that condition that they're almost ready to die? Lots of people. No, it isn't. I'm talking about people dying from that virus. Oh, yeah. No one. No one. No. Maybe few. Now, I understand there's a lot of people dying around us can have a heart attack and all kinds of things and all that stuff. We understand that, you know. People are dying because they got cancer, they got leukemia and whatever other disease. Uh, they're on death row, you know. They're in ICU and they're, they're waiting for the last time. They're the only ones that are on the bottom of the battle. Yeah. On, the, on the battle. But the rest of us 
are outside, don't have nothing, not even the flu. No. <laughs> and we're panicking like, you know, we can't do nothing. But it's all in your mind. Yeah. yeah. But in a sense, we have to understand something. There's something we have to understand when it comes how you face the impossibilities of your circumstance in your life. Right now, it's not the virus that you're worried about right now. You're worried about how you're going to pay your bills. Yeah. Amen? You're worried about where's your next meal coming from. Yeah. You're worried about, am I going to be kicked out of my apartment? You name it. There's, there's more people more concerned about that than anything else. Yeah. I don't think people are not wanting looking at the virus. They're just trying to think how to survive. Yeah. People that are end up becoming homeless, their, their worry is that when is my next meal? Yeah. Where am I going to sleep tonight? Amen? Who's going to really care for me? Who's going to help me? Amen? When this kind of thinking starts beginning to overwhelm you, naturally you're going to have reactions, you're going to get angry, and people are going to want to get violent because they're expressing their dissatisfaction. It's, it's not fair what's happening. This should not be happening, right? But that's not going to solve it because you've still got a problem here. Not just because you go on a rage, it's not going to change anything. Unless we have to deal with ourselves. Yeah. Amen. Especially when you're in a situation and you know in your mind and your heart Whatever the circumstance you're facing, whether you're worried about the virus or worried about next job or you're worried about your finances, some people have no worries about the finances, but they're still worried about the virus. They're worried about how, how am I going to go forward in life? Am I going to be locked up forever? You know, people are miserable. People are discouraged. People are filled with hopelessness. People are, cannot even go visit their loved ones because they're afraid of what? Nothing. Nothing. But they're being projected in their minds to worry about it. And whether they realize it or not, especially if you don't have Jesus in your life, especially if you don't have a relationship with God, but even when you have a relationship with God, you're still going to be bombarded. You're going to still be taxed spiritually and you're emotionally and physically and spiritually. Even psychologically, you're going to be taxed in your mind. And it's going to have an effect on your life. Now, we're not the first one that has been in crisis. And this won't be the last time you're going to face problems in life. But we just need to understand when you're facing crisis, when you're facing sickness, when you're facing problems that you have financial difficulties, to find a solution to get out of it. Amen? You know, people said, maybe the government give me a big check so I can, I can, I can survive, but Will that, sit, will that help you? Not really, because it's only good for about a month or so, and that's it. And even if it's not for a month, it may sustain you, but it won't pay your bills. You're still in a pickle, amen? You're in a hardship, right? So whenever we face these things, and you that are listening on YouTube, whether you're a Christian or non-Christian, we're all in the same boat. Christians aren't eliminated from crisis. They're no more better off than the world is. The only difference is that 
at least we can go to God. Amen. Amen. But what is it about the people who don't believe in God? Where are they going to go? Yeah. They're going to go see a psychiatrist. Oh, yeah. And the psychiatrist is going to give them a couple pills. And take this. This makes you really good. And you just get on a, a some kind of... Um, some kind of high on some kind of drug that's going to mess up your mind and after a while you get addicted to it and you know how to get out of it you're stuck in it for the rest of your life and you're talking like you're disabled that you cannot no longer function you can no longer think for yourself you're now hooked on a drug that's controlling your mind yeah. is that what you want? is that a solution? no <laughs> Hallelujah. So what's the what's the solution? Up above. Okay, we got to reach God now, right? Hallelujah. Yeah. We know we got to turn to God, and that's that's an easy decision to say, yeah, I got to turn to God. But understand what is it that's going to cause you to turn to God? Because in Second Chronicles twenty three it says. Jehoshaphat feared. Amen? Because of his circumstances. Now, another description of fear is, is you're overwhelmed. Yeah. You're emotionally overwhelmed, right? Another way, he was in a situation, he was afraid, because of his crisis. There's another thing that comes when you start begin to feel afraid or fear takes a hold of you. You start feeling helpless. Oh yeah. When a person starts feeling helpless, he don't know who to trust in, and even the things that they're trusting in is seems like you don't have no comfort there. Helplessness overwhelms you. Now, now you got to rest assure you that you know, you know, when we look at the, the crises that are that's it, is rising, and and notice what's happening in the world. The world's getting upset, and what's happening? Everybody's getting so upset. They're even at the point of starting wars. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Because they're upset because happened and they want to blame somebody for it that why is this happening and so they start a war. Yeah. Or somebody starting a war to try to bring us out of the mess that we're in. But creating a war is not going to solve, it's going to make things worse. Because you're still helpless. Amen. Another thing that affects when you start being afraid is you start being overwhelmed by hopelessness. You start having hopelessness because the fear is, is beginning to control you and from hopelessness you, you go into being overwhelmed in your mind and your thoughts. And you say, why am I being overwhelmed by everything? It's because when this is beginning to happen, kind of remind me, what was it that affect Peter when he was walking on the water and when suddenly he began to sink? Yeah. Fear. Fear. Yeah. He he got up, he began to be afraid of what? He was afraid of his circumstances because all of a sudden he realized I'm walking on the water. So he was, oh, my circumstance. Looks like I'm walking on the water. It's not very little reliable. It's not very solid. It's not on solid ground. That's how you feel in your circumstance that you don't have a leg to stand on. Yeah. Amen. But then the next thing that, 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 that affected him with fear was he saw already heard the wind blowing and the thundering that was 
thundering, the lightning. So there was a lightning storm going on and the waves going up and down and he started looking at all the things. Like your, your circumstances are like waves, they go up and down, emotional waves, up and down, up and down, and it's all affecting your mind. It's affecting your thinking, it's affecting your uh, trying to reason, and, your, uh, and it's, it's starting to control you, and all of a sudden, because you're feeling all these things, you're looking too much on your circumstance, you're looking too much on the situation all around you, and all of a sudden, this hopelessness, helplessness, is beginning to overwhelm you, and you're sinking in your mind in your emotions that you have no hope for tomorrow. And a lot of times when people get to that point, they are ready to give up on life. They figure the solution is that I might as well die. What's the use going on? Or they start panicking and we gotta run away. We gotta go someplace else. We gotta move out of town. And, and, and on and on it goes. I gotta do this, I gotta do that, instead of staying, staying still and praying and seeking the face of God. Because that's exactly what Jehoshaphat was praying, feeling. He was overwhelmed by what he saw and aware in his mind and thoughts about what's happening. Now, if you watch the news long enough, you're gonna get overwhelmed. Yeah. And you're gonna get overwhelmed listening to all the all the negative words that have been spoken, and that you're looking for something to hook on to have some hope in the midst of a virus, so even the vaccine starts sounding good. Because you're trying to put your hope on something that's gonna get us out of the situation, not realizing that it's not going to get better, but worse. You hear me? Because the vaccine is not the answer. No. And the vaccine is not the solution either. No. The vaccine is just another problem. That's right. Amen. Now, you may disagree with me or agree with me, that's fine, but I want you to recognize what's affecting your emotions and your thoughts and how these things has come into your life where all of a sudden even your faith in God is beginning to sway back and forth like a wave. All of a sudden you don't put your total trust in God like you used to now because you're not getting built up and going to church and hearing the word of God. You're, you're spiritually drained to the bottom and you're trying to reach God out of your hopelessness and out of, your, out of the overwhelming of your circumstances. You're trying to reach God when you're filled with fear and doubt and you, in your mind, you say, God, where are you? Where are you? Why is this happening to me? Where are you? And then you get into a spiritual battle where your imagination starts working over time and the enemy's playing with your mind, making you feel like, you know, you're going to want to quit and give up on life. You're trying to find a peace of mind. But do you really have peace of mind? No. And see, the problem is when this happened to Jehoshaphat, when you're feeling you're at the bottom, is what we need to do what Jehoshaphat did. You see, every one of us take the mask off yeah. and let's face the facts. Every one of us experience these things in our lives. I don't care how pretty up the preacher gets up there and sings a song and preaches, gets you all positive and all that stuff, but when he goes home, he faces the same problem you are. Yeah. He still has to make sure how we're gonna pay our bills, how we're gonna survive in the midst of this crisis, any crisis. 
Not even this, but even though, because we're right in it, we can relate to it. You see, we can relate to this now because we're in it. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. And what did he do when he, when he realized this was happening? He says here, as a result of Jehoshaphat fearing, he set himself to seek the Lord. Now, he set himself to seek the Lord. Most people don't understand, what do you mean, set yourself to seek God? If your life is overwhelmed and, and it's all the situation and it doesn't take too much for us to get, get, get sweaty and, and tossed back and forth, it's when we're experiencing it and seeing that and aware of that, we need to set our faith in God Amen. and begin to turn to Him why? You see, a lot of problems have this problem. They're looking for a quick fix. Yeah. Everybody's looking instant mashed potatoes. <laughs> Everything going to drop on like you go up to the Burger King and right up to the window. You make your order and come to the window. You got your order. Yeah. You got your Burger King. Yeah. Or Tim Hortons, either way. Yeah. Right? We like to have instantly everything done immediately. And this has been dragging around over a year now because it's made to drag for a year. And what is this doing to you? It's affecting your emotions. It's affecting your thinking. It's affecting Christians where they don't even want to go to church no more. It's affecting them because they don't want to pray no more. Because they're so overwhelmed by everything that's happening to them and it's affecting their mind. Yeah. Now, Jehoshaphat was a believer. He's a believer. He's serving God. He knows the king and kings. He, he knows who God is. And he's been serving God since a child. And all of a sudden when he's looking at this situation and it's beyond control and it looks impossible, there's no way we can fix this just like what it looks like today. Hallelujah. And he could have just given in to it. Now, look at it. Since his situation affected his life, he knew he needed help. And he realized that there was no way that he could solve the problem. And he got himself into a position that there's only one thing he can do to get the solution. And he set himself to look to God and towards him. Amen. Now, it's clear fear had gripped his mind. Fear had started to control him and overwhelm him. Now, when you are in this condition in your heart and mind in the situation we're in, you know that you can't overcome this thing in your own strength. We know that right now. No matter how much how smart you are and how much ability you got. Because if there's something happens when you start getting hopeless and filled with fear and, and overwhelmed by the situation. You're missing an element in your life that how are you going to overcome what you're facing? And that is because without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible to have faith in God when you're discouraged, filled with hopelessness and fear. You see, we got to understand if you have been affected by fear and worry and, and hopelessness and discouragement, it's hard for you to have faith and trust in God when you feel like you're at the bottom. 
because you have all these symptoms that's tanking your mind, that's affecting your life, some more, some less, right? Now, I'm not saying that everybody you are having this effect, but but you can understand what I'm saying that there, there's a, even if it's only 10% affecting on you, it has effect. But we gotta get 100% overcoming it. We, don't, we cannot even have 10 or 30% or 50% of our lives affected by what we see that's around us. Amen. Because we like a quick fix, we all want to change things quickly, quickly, quickly. That's the problem. This quick fix is not a quick fix. The problem is when we try to quickly fix things, we end up pursuing making mistakes. Uh -huh. yeah. We make big mistakes. Yeah. Why? Because we haven't taken the time to ask God for direction in what we should do. Yeah. People are making bad decisions when Apostle Paul was in a, in a storm and all the people were panicking because they knew that that it's bad some people were considering jumping off the boat until God spoke to Paul and say tell him that Tell, that, tell the captain that as, as long as everybody stays on the boat, they will be safe. Because the, the temptation was that you jump on your own, and when you do that, when you're in a hopeless situation, you have no security, you have no hope that God's going to sustain you and take you through it and, and overcome it. And, and because the people obeyed the word that Apostle Paul spoke to the captain because he told the captain before he was getting ready to get on this trip, he said, don't go on this trip. This, this, this is not a good trip to get on. And, he, and the captain said, who do you think you are? You've never been to sea. <laughs> Made kind of fun of him, but he wasn't laughing now when they were in the storm. And, and what Paul said, you need to stay, stand still. You need to not to be panicking. You need not to let the circumstances control you and affect you. Just hang in there. Amen. Hanging in there is probably one of the hardest things to do because we all like to quit and run away. Yeah. But you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't win doing that. You never overcome what you're facing. Now, so it says he feared and he set himself to seek the Lord and to ask help from the Lord. Amen. Isn't that awesome? I'm jumping two scriptures there. But I, I want to go right into that to ask help of the Lord. You got to seek him, you got to set himself. He had to seek the Lord and he had to gather together, come together and ask help from the Lord. Amen. There's a, there's a situation. He called the whole nation to come and seek the Lord. He called the whole nation to gather together and seek help from God. And they all gathered together because they were all in the situation that was affecting everybody. <coughs> now look at this. Why does God want us to st start or set ourselves to seek the Lord and ask help from the Lord? What actually is happening when we're doing this, number one thing, Every one of us, if you stop and think about this, no matter where you are and to what degree you're being affected by the storm, 
or by their circumstances. Number one thing is when you set to seek the face of God because you're overwhelmed by your situation, the first thing you need to deal with is with your heart. Uh -huh. yep. You see, if you don't, you don't pretend that you're not being affected by what you see, but you can pretend for so long until you blow up, amen? <laughs> you can only pr pretend so long till it overwhelms you, till you get to a point that, that you're in a place of no, no hope at all, amen? So before you get yourself into trouble, you need to set yourself and begin to pray and seek the face of God with all your heart. You got to realize when you're dealing with whatever's in your heart is what's hindering you from gaining the victory in your life. Why is it that we cry to God, help me, save me. And the Lord saves you, right? Not always. Hello? Peter, when he began to sing, he said, Lord, save me. He didn't ask for any help when he was sinking. When he realized that he was in the danger of drowning, that's when he asked for help. Hello? And it's the same thing when you're beginning to be affected by the circumstances that's happening all around you. You need to humble yourself and deal with what you're afraid of. And whatever thing you have in your heart and mind, it's easy to criticize people that they don't have faith. It's easy to criticize and see people are making wrong turns in life. It's easy to kind of look down at a person who's discouraged and feeling with hopelessness and are ready to give up and end up going into drugs and alcohol. Yeah. But it wasn't drugs and alcohol was the problem. It's the fact that they were so overwhelmed they were trying to relieve themselves with that. There's more people drinking now. Isn't it strange that they made an essential thing? It's almost encouraging you to go ahead and get drunk. Yeah. Oh, get high. Might as well get high. Legalize marijuana so you can get high. Why in the world would they encourage that when, when in actuality, you, you're trying to drown your fears and worries and troubles when you should be setting yourself to begin to pray and seek the face of God and deal with what you're afraid of. Yeah. Now, I can be honest with you. I have not one bit worried about this COVID. Me either. I am not worried about the, if whether I have a mask on or not. And I'm not worried about it in so much that I don't even worry about it. I'm not even going to take a vaccine because what am I take a vaccine for? Yeah. I'm not afraid of COVID or, or whatever. Yeah. And I'm not doing this to be ignorant. <laughs> I'm not doing this because I'm, I'm trying to bully people around and say that you got to do what I say. No. I just know I have assurance and heart that I'm not affected by what's happening around us no matter what's happening. Yeah. I actually can sleep good at night. Yeah, me too. Hallelujah. And I get up in the morning. Do I still have crisis? Do I have problems? Yes. Just like everybody else. Yeah. But the only difference is I have already began to set my life in seeking and drawing nigh to God for the last 42 years. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And believe me, I've gone through all kinds of fiery trials and difficulties and hardships in life, but I've learned to realize that my key in overcoming my situation was that I have to deal with my heart. And deal with my mind that if I have some fears or hopelessness or weakness 
Jesus in my life that if I deal with those things in my heart and I draw nigh to God, that God will take those things out of my heart. Right. And that's exactly what Jehoshaphat began to do. Now, like I said, everybody was a quick fix. When you're experiencing this battle spiritually, mostly, psychologically, or whatever, you want to call it fleshly or whatever, you need to realize it's not God's will for you to die, it's not God's will for you to go down, it's not God's will for you to give up and quit, it's not God's will for you, you to, to allow hopelessness to overwhelm you. But if it's happening, don't ignore it. Don't put a bag over your head and pretend it's not happening because you're experiencing it. But instead, face it. Yeah. And begin to pray and set your mind that I am not going to let fear control me. I'm not going to let discouragement control me. I am not going to let my circumstances control my life. Hallelujah. I know so many times people come up to me and say, Oh, Pastor, I got all these problems, and oh, you don't know how I'm going through, and all that stuff. I say, Well, that's nothing. I says, Just give it to God and, and pray it through. Right. And while I'm telling them that advice, I said, I never stop to tell them, I say, You don't know what I'm going through. <laughs> I got more problems than you do, but and, and yet I'm not affected by it, not because I'm better than you, it's because I've learned to face my fears and worries that I do not allow those things to control me because God is on my side and God's leading me through them and I'm rising above them all the time. You don't see me panicking, you don't, do I look like I'm afraid or something? No. You know, they say not to have church. You know when they when they started this COVID thing? Yeah. A year ago? And they started talking about it wasn't essential to have church. You know what I said right from the start? I said, what are you talking about not essential? Since when church wasn't essential? Since when <laughs> was it no longer essential? essential to pray and seek the face of God and so I made up my mind that, that I don't care how unessential un people say it was I never stopped having church no. you mean to tell me I had church with five people yeah. yes I wasn't just preaching to the TV <laughs> amen I was preaching to five people I mean four people me and four. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Because if I can preach to four, at least we're all staying afloat. Amen. Yeah. And I nobody in this world has the power to tell me that I can't preach. Yeah. I don't care if it's the Prime Minister of Canada or the President of the United States. Amen. Nobody. Amen. As far as as for me and my house, this is my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Nobody can stop me from serving God. No. And, and that's why I'm on top of it. Amen. Now, but I gotta explain something. When this is happening, right? You gotta ask yourself the question, why are you panicking. Doesn't matter what it is causing you to panic, right? When you're panicking and you're overwhelmed, feeling hopeless and discouraged, ask your next question. Who are you looking for help? Uh -huh. Because if you're looking for help from the world, you're not getting it. Nope. Next question, who are you placing your trust in? Yeah. Right? So the question
question is, you got to answer yourself this question honestly. Are you putting your faith or trust in your hopelessness? Are you putting your faith and your trust in your fear? Are you placing your trust in what's happening to you? In the circumstances? virus or whatever because what will happen if you are trusting in what you're fearing you know what I mean by trusting it yeah. what's happening to people are trusting in what they're fearing right now it will rule and control you when you when you start trusting it yeah. When you start trusting what they're putting in your mind to do and panicking and you got to have a mask and you can't go out and isolate yourself from everybody else, it has a spiritual effect on your mind and what it does to you spiritually, it paralyzes you. Yeah. Because you have submitted to it. You know, I got people saying, you got to obey the law of the land was it I don't obey the laws of the land I obey God Hallelujah. there's a big difference obeying God and the laws of the land because the laws of the land don't even line up with God no never you say how what do you mean well if we obey the laws of the land so abortion's okay yeah getting drunk is okay uh huh Getting stoned is okay. Uh -huh. Sitting is okay. For well, the laws have made it legal to sin. Yeah, that's true. But that doesn't mean it's good. No. But if 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 the things that I mentioned we're not gonna talk about are you going to obey your fears? Are you going to yield to your, your doubts? Are you going to yield to the circumstances? Because the moment you do that, you're being enslaved by those things in your life. That's right. So when he said, Jehovah, so Jehoshaphat set himself to pray and seek the face of God and ask him help from the Lord, he had to deal with himself. The nation of Israel had to deal with themselves. They have to deal with their fear. They have to deal with their hopelessness. They have to deal with everything that they were feeling in their emotions. And whether you're going to church or not, you're going to be affected by this. And if you want to overcome this fear and worry and hopelessness in your life, you've got to face what you're, whatever fear that's trying to dominate and control you. Absolutely. Otherwise, it's going to, you're going down. Yeah. Because it's going to paralyze your faith. It's going to paralyze that you won't be able to even make a move because you're afraid. Uh -huh. You will not have the confidence to believe that God's going to take you to it and God's going to make a way for you even though it may look impossible. Amen. And when you end up surrendering to fear, your fear becomes your God. Yeah. That's it. Your hopelessness now becomes your God. Yeah. We gotta understand. We we have to understand why did God send His Son in the world is to save us from the hopelessness that we have. And we have this hopelessness in our natural man. Yeah. Already to start with. So it's easy for us to fall into the snare of these things. And that's why this pandemic, this pandemonia, whatever you want to call it, this was all planned. Yeah. This was planned to put fear into your mind. This was planned to, to, to put doubt in your heart. This was planned to make you feel defeated. This was planned to paralyze you and to lock you up and lose your jobs and small business not to make a success and go bankrupt. Yeah. 
this was all planned. Yeah. And you say, oh, no, 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 no. They, they're only protecting. They're not protecting you because this is causing more damage to the people's lives than the virus itself. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I've been to the mission field. I've been to very mean-looking places, you know, yeah. preaching the gospel yeah. with all kinds of in infections and diseases that you can imagine. And I've gone 12 times to the Philippines and I've been up and down that. I've been four times to India. I've been to Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, into the places that, you know, into the slum areas. There were all this infested diseases and I never caught it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. But I was never afraid to go. No. I said, aren't you afraid to go? You know, they got terrorists over there in Philippines that they made announcement that nobody go over there because terrorists are there. <laughs> we urge you not to go. Canadian government warning me. And I went anyway. I never saw them. I wasn't looking for them either. <laughs> and I came back safe. Yeah. Amen. You see, we can either be controlled by fears or doubts. We can either talk defeat or victory. And whatever you're confessing with your heart and mind, this is affects you spiritually. Because they say we cut down because there's a COVID so dangerous uh, we can only have 10 people in a church. Oh, no. We closed the church now. Oh, boy. You got a church with 300 people. Close the church, man. Yeah. Why? I like the pastor in Alberta. They never close the church either. No. They got a whole lot more people than we do. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And nobody's sick there. All this protection. Don't you think that there's uh, something wrong with the picture? For sure. How come they're not sick? If we're trying to protect them. And how is it that we pass a law that is wrong to get together when they're getting together for the Lord and they're not even having a protest against the government? No. They're only interested in serving God and helping people and blessing them. Amen. How come it's against the law to help people now? How come they say they couldn't feed the poor? And it's against the law and give them all kinds of tickets. Yeah. But he went ahead and fed them anyway. If he was filled with fear, he wouldn't do it. Yeah. And the reason he wasn't filled with fear, because he was filled with love. That's true. And you tell those people that are starving out there, they're getting feed at Christmas time, a thousand of them, and you tell me, when they say, nobody can go and have Christmas this year. <laughs> Stay home. Don't go visiting loved ones. Families don't get together. And they got a thousand people get together and nobody's got no viruses. Well, don't you think there's something wrong with this picture? It's okay. That's in the news. Everybody's talking about it. Amen. But you see, we've got to understand, if you're going to overcome your fear and your hopelessness and your discouragement, and, and if you want to be released from being paralyzed spiritually, you're going to have to face it and begin to pray and begin to move it out of the way. Yeah. Amen? Because if you don't face it, that thing's going to rule you. Yeah. If you don't face fear, fear is going to dominate you. Yeah. I'd rather have love control me instead of fear. Absolutely. Amen. I'd rather have peace than turmoil. Amen. And the way you get peace, you have to face whatever's causing your turmoil. That's right. And when you begin to humble and say, God, 
I don't want no turmoil. I don't want no frustrations. I don't want no anger. I don't want no sickness and diseases. I don't want these weaknesses controlling my life anymore. I'm coming to you because I want to be free. I want to be forgiven. I want this consciousness of defeat being taken out of my heart. And that's what Jehoshaphat did. He began to seek and pray and seek the face of God and deal with every issue that was wrong in their lives. And that's the problem. We say, yeah, they pray, they seek God, and then go down to the next chapter, and there it is, halfway down, 15 verse, you know. And then the Lord says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which the Lord shall do for the day, for the, for the, you know. Understand what I'm saying? Tomorrow you're going to go fight against your man, and you're going to win. Hallelujah. We like to say that, right? But the problem with that is that you haven't dealt with your problem. That's right. You haven't come to the God and asked to remove your, your, your attitude out of your heart and mind, your emotions, your feelings, the discouragement and hopelessness. When you face that thing and say, get out of my life, I wash myself in the precious blood of Jesus. I renew myself by the word of God and condition my heart. That even if you're on the point of death, God will resurrect you from the dead. Hallelujah. Amen. It doesn't matter how bad things get, God can still win the battle. Amen. When it looks impossible, all things are possible to them that believe it. But before you can say all things are possible to them that believe it, you've got to get rid of your unbelief. And you got to dig it out. you got to wash it out. you got to renew it. you got to say cast it out. You gotta cast out every imagination that exalt itself against the knowledge of God because we got to realize we cannot allow this world and the thoughts and imaginations and these spirits that to come and dominate and control you, whether it's fear, worry, or whatever. I mean, can you imagine your word about going out because you might catch the cancer? <laughs> I don't know if I can eat this food because there's poison in it. The Bible says it's blessed whatever you eat. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Ask no questions for conscience sake. If you're worried about this, worried about that, worried about worry, 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 worry about everything, and you get into a rut of worry, you are full of worry. Yeah, for sure. And it turns to fear. And death. And it destroys you in the end. I'm not worried. What's there to worry about? Yeah. No. Because I have faith in God. Amen. Hallelujah. But you got to realize, it's, it, you say, well, it's easy for you to say that. Well, you know what? I dealt with it. And I got it out of me. Every time I face a crisis, I dealt with it. I cast it up. I resist fear. And I pray through till God speaks and faith rises because you can't have faith unless you enter into it. You can't have victory unless you submit to it. You cannot have love and a sound mind until you yield to it. And that's what Jehoshaphat did with the whole nation as they began to pray and seek God. And I, I, I'm not going into the end of the promise when they got the victory. I want you to understand the process they went through to get there till they got the victory. It's like there is a process you got to go through and pray and removing the mountains out of your way because the enemy is working overtime to try to drive you with the fear and worries and circumstances of your life whether you're sick in your body or having a virus or whatever you're worried about, it doesn't matter we got a God that will deliver, heal us and set us free but you've got to bring your heart to that place you've got to come and 
submission to God and you've got to rise above your circumstances and let nothing scare you. Hallelujah. Awesome. Amen. Now I know that there are many of you out there that you're going through this and, and I'm not condemning you. I'm not looking down at you. I'm, I'm not you know, upset because you're afraid of this virus. What I'm trying to tell you is that turn to God with all your heart. What I'm telling you is let God wash this fear out of your heart and stop being bullied around by people and, and even governments and, and, and come in submission to God and, and find a peace that passes understanding in the Holy Spirit and the living God and just humble and say, sorry God, I wasn't, didn't realize I was making the wrong choices. The choice you can make tonight, you can humble and say, God, wash me, cleanse me, forgive me, and then go home and pray. Yeah. And deal with it till it's clear. Yeah. Because you, you will rise above your circumstances. And God will lift you up. When you humble yourself to Him, He will not turn you down. He has heard your prayer. And this is why I'm sharing a word like this. It's kind of an unusual word to be spoken. But I know it's true. Yeah. And I'm talking from experience. Yeah. I'm not talking from head knowledge. I've gone through it, so I know it. I have overcome it. And every time I humbled and laid it down, the issues in my mind and life, God caused me to rise above it and I'm always victorious, overcoming because God says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm with you always to the end. Amen. And you got to realize God is not finished yet. And God is already making a way for us. Amen. But let's get our heart in the right place that when God does bless us. Yeah. That will be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. You see, it's not that God is late, ever late. He's never late. Never. He's right on time. So everything that God is bringing to you is on His time. Yeah. And it's whenever you get to that place. You know, I, I always wonder about this. Why did it take for me to go to 35 years as a pastor and to go through everything I've gone through over the 35 years. And, and why is it that I feel more freer today than I did 35 years ago? I have more peace today than ever before. I, 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 I've discovered the only thing I do stand up against is anything that's contrary to the Word of God. Hallelujah. I will not submit to the lies of the devil. Hallelujah. I will not yield myself to this ridiculous nonsense that they're saying. Hallelujah. For the simple fact, because I don't believe it. No. Amen. Because I don't believe it, I stay true to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So let's just end with a song and and our favorite song that we like to sing at the end. Because this is a prayer at the same time. Because if you're going to win and gain victory in your life over your situation, circumstances, emotions and thoughts, fears and doubts, you just have to yield to the love of God and let the blood of Jesus wash you, cleanse you, heal you and lay down those burdens lay down all those fears let go of those things and don't let it control you and just say God whatever it takes God let your love take over my life 
and let me be lifted up in my spirit. I yield to you with all getting an understanding of what we talk about. But now even more, have the understanding of living in it. Having the overcoming life of Jesus that's going to take us into glory. And His glory is going to come alive inside of us. And we get to say thank you, Jesus. In everything we are giving you glory. 
and thank you for being so good to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have an awesome day. God bless you.